Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. The dogs have been run, so hopefully a few minutes of peace. It won't last long, so I'll take the opportunity to do a quick vid. Let's talk about the HPG axis, because obviously this is how you regulate your own testosterone level normally. The hypopituitary gonadal axis. This is a self-regulating negative feedback mechanism that should be able to respond to what's going on outside and more importantly, what's going on inside to regulate a healthy testosterone level. Well, let's think about what testosterone does. It's the primary hormone necessary for growth and repair to allow for normal physiology and function. So what's it responding to? Well, predominantly the opposite of anabolism, which is catabolism. And that's predominantly activity, but obviously activity extends more than going for a run. It's normal physiological function, things like digestion, etc. So normally the brain would send signals down to the testicles. So it does that from sending gonadotrophin releasing hormone down from the hypothalamus to the pituitary and then sending luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating down to the testicles to produce testosterone and sperm respectively. This is a layman's guide. Okay, so it is a little bit more complex than what I'm going to make out it to be, but this is all you really need to know. So the testosterone gets produced and it gets bound to two proteins produced by the liver. 98% of your testosterone is bound to those two proteins. Sex hormone binding globulin, yes, my favorite glycoprotein, and albumin. So everybody wants to lower shbg you don't want to lower shbg shbg is a positive health marker and when it comes to testosterone whilst it may reduce bioavailable testosterone actually the testosterone bound to shbg gets transferred into the cell for growth and repair which is why shbg goes up in stress states so don't listen to the bros listen to the doc so 98 percent of your testosterone is bound to those two proteins so you must look to optimize liver health by putting what you need into your body, not what you want into your body. Don't engage in negative behaviors and stop eating sugar. Sugar is highly refined. It's poisoning you. It's feeding those addictive centers in the brain, that dopamine hit that you love, but you don't need it. You just want it. So 2% of your testosterone is free, bioavailable. Now you can use testosterone as testosterone, but as we already know, it gets converted to two other hormones, dihydrotestosterone and estradiol. So those three hormones, they exert their effects on their target organs, because again, hormones are essentially chemical messengers that help facilitate the function of their organ. And they also feed back to the brain. The predominant hormone that feeds back to the brain is estradiol, then testosterone, then DHT. Herein lies the problem, estradiol. Now, some people will have you believe that you can't have excess estradiol. Now, if we think about where the aromatase enzyme is, and that's the enzyme that converts testosterone to estradiol, it's located in numerous tissues. Two tissues that you can directly impact a positive change to your health with are excess fat and liver dysregulation. So all you chunky monkeys, you have more aromatase enzyme than you need or want, and you produce too much estradiol. That estradiol is going to the brain, and tricking the brain into thinking that you have enough testosterone. So you're not sending as much LH down and FSH down as you need, and you're subsequently producing less testosterone and then feeling worse. And then, yeah, look into the path of least resistance, maximum reward, and eating to get energy. Now we've spoken about this before. The three fundamentals of health are lifestyle, nutrition, and exercise. And you must address everything to be a healthy human being. Number one, sleep. If you don't sleep properly and your anabolic processes predominate at nighttime, you've got no chance of producing good healthy testosterone levels for long-term health and well-being. Sleep priority then nutrition, then exercise. But as humans, we focus on one thing, but we must focus on everything. We must adopt a holistic approach to health because if you exercise, what's going to improve? 
Yeah, you sleep. And when you sleep well, you make better food choices. Starting to work it out. So again, the body survives on the concept of balance. Anything in excess is deleterious. Let's just take ADHD, because this is a very popular diagnosis right now. So you're hyperactive and you're prescribed a stimulant. So it makes sense that things downregulate because that's why you're prescribed a stimulant. Maddie, I'm going to. So, yeah, anything in excess is bad for you. And as humans, we try to seek out excess. We shouldn't. We should understand what the concept of balance and the necessity for contrast in order to establish harmony. So we go anabolic processes predominate at nighttime, catabolic processes predominate in the daytime. And I say predominantly because obviously you have the capacity to be anabolic in the daytime and catabolic at nighttime, which leads on to the sleep discussion. Because obviously when people have obstructive sleep apnea, you're lowering your oxygen saturations, which creates a stress state, which creates these neurotransmitters firing. Do I need to wake up and leave this environment because my oxygen saturations are dropping or are we OK to stay here? So often what happens is your Maddie. Good girl. Often what happens is you don't realize you've got a problem because you're asleep. Listen to your partner. If they say you snore, you do snore. You need to sort that out. So you need to start making better food choices, not going to carbohydrates. Understanding low carb, high fat is the best diet out there in generality because you do need carbohydrates. Your body, your brain, your muscles like carbohydrates. But again, everything has to be balanced and our lives are not balanced. We seek the path of least resistance, maximum reward, re not recognizing that a short term gain often leads to a long term loss. You can divide the day up into sympathetic and parasympathetic. As we said before, we're hunter gatherers. We should be active in the first part of the day, predominantly sympathetic. But to be effective hunters, we need to have parasympathetic. Mari! We need to have the ability to be parasympathetic. So when you're hunting, you must control your breath. And so you are going to be more effective because you're going to be less reactive and you're going to be more considered. And as we said in previous videos, testosterone is the calming hormone. It provides that necessary balance from your excitatory neurotransmitters and cortisol to the calming testosterone, estradiol and DHT. Things get even more complex because we know that testosterone has a relationship with dopamine. Estradiol has a relationship with serotonin. Dopamine is excitatory. Estradiol serotonin is more inhibitory. There's lots of seesaws. There's lots of balancing acts going on right now in your body to help maintain homeostasis. And when you've got low testosterone, they're dysregulated and they culminate in negative symptoms like tiredness, brain fog, low libido. The list goes on. And we don't want to feel like that. But we need an understanding of physiology to affect a positive, sustainable change to our health. So you go on testosterone replacement therapy and the magic cure. You get that wonderful drug effect. But it's not sustainable because it's a drug effect. So again, we need to establish balance. And the best way of doing that is microdosing testosterone replacement therapy. Daily injections, because yes, you can get stable levels with less intensive injection frequencies. But we need to have a little peak in the morning to mimic physiology, because as I've said before, your anabolic processes predominate at nighttime, your catabolic processes predominate in the daytime. So you have a little bit of a peak of testosterone in the morning and a subsequent dopamine spike. And we're desperately seeking dopamine. So the activity lowers testosterone, which means that we want to get that dopamine back. And there's a progression that needs to happen. So you transfer from predominantly active to predominantly resting. And the key, the signal should be eating. So don't eat breakfast. Break your fast after you've earned it. Very simple. Maddie, I love you, but my 
God. Nothing else to say apart from, you know, go earn your reward. <laughs>